Hey friends and neighbors, as a home buyer, how familiar are you with all the different inspections that you can make on a property? How about the term TRR? Do you know what that means and what it entails? There's a lot that goes into being an informed consumer and I want you to be the very best at it. So give me just a minute and I'll explain it all to you. I'm Steve Reese, a realtor in the Oklahoma City metro area, specifically Shawnee, a suburb uh, just east of Tinker Air Force Base. I have the soldonshawnee.com real estate and community blog. And on this channel, I tell you everything you need to know about relocating to the Oklahoma City metro area. So what goes into making sure the house you want to buy doesn't let you down? Let's get started. First, it's important to know there's not a perfect house. Even a new house is going to have some issues that uh, need to be corrected before we close. But not everything is going to be a big giant deal for you. So there are items that break. And I'm talking on a, on a used home, a pre-lived in home. There are items that break or wear out or just not perfect. So it's important that uh, first that you anticipate imperfections as you uh, go through the purchase process and be reasonable about the repairs that you request. In the purchase contract, we specify a beginning date. It's called the time reference date for our investigations period. Many time it defaults to uh, a day that's like three days after the last signature of the um, uh, approval of the contract. But just for argument's sake, let's say it's about two weeks, just under two weeks as the default. Okay, so during that approximate two week investigations period that we have to uh, make sure this home doesn't let you down, I strongly encourage you as a client of mine to have the property uh, inspected by a licensed home inspector and also uh, we'll have to have it inspected by a licensed pest control company for termites and uh, other wood destroying organisms. But uh, uh, also during this time, you'll want to have your insurance company uh, take a look at it, make sure that they're not gonna exclude the roof or there's not some other issue that we don't know about to make sure that it's gonna be insurable too. Okay, so your investigations, inspections, and review may cover things like items that are covered on the seller's uh, property condition disclosure. If they've marked something on there that is not in working order, or if they do not know if it's working order, then uh, we obviously want to pay closer attention to that and see what's going on, see if it's a big deal for you. Um, there are instances, though, where the seller is exempt from pro providing a full disclosure, and uh, in those cases, um, your inspection is even more critical to you uh, finding out what you need to know. We want to know about its uh, flood history, uh, storm runoff, water, um, storm sewer backup, or other things related to uh, water on the property. So properties may be psychologically impacted, which means that there could have been a, a serious crime or a death or a murder in the property. Um, those sort of things aren't necessarily going to be part of, well, actually, they're not going to be part of uh, a regular disclosure. But if that's something that's important to you, then uh, we need to flesh that out and have you ask it uh, in writing. I'll present that to the listing agent and they'll in turn give it to the seller to get an answer for you. Also, uh, Megan's Law is uh, something that in Oklahoma that uh, we want to uh, take a look at so um, to see if there are sex offenders in the uh, area or the vicinity that's important to you. Now keep in mind that uh, just because there is or is not a sex offender uh, registered nearby that could always change and um, somebody who's there now could move, somebody who's not there could move in later. So there are environmental risks, things like uh, contaminated soil or water, um, radon gas, lead-based paint, those things um, we'll inspect for if, if you like. Um, a home inspector will be able to uh, tip us off if there's a concern in some of those areas and then we can uh, dig deeper with a uh, with a specialized inspector. The home inspector will uh, take a look at the roof and uh, the decking and, and the components related to a roof, but there's not a, necessarily a, a roofer. Um, if the home inspector or you uh, feel like the roof needs a closer look, then we'll have a, a, a roofing contractor go take a look at it too. Also, like I mentioned, the insurance company, you may want to have them over to uh, to make sure that the roof is not going to be excluded from your policy. Uh, structural inspection is uh, certainly an option for you. The uh, home inspector home inspector will um, 
note anything that might uh, might be a concern and that we want to have a structural engineer or uh, somebody from a foundation company to come look at. And then there are the fixtures, equipment, systems, and all the fixtures and things in the house, the light fixtures, the electrical system, the electrical panel, um, appliances, heat and air system, uh, a pool, a spa, a sprinkler system, a security systems, all those things that go uh, into uh, creature comforts and things in a house, uh, the home inspector will look at, but are certainly covered in uh, what you're able to and what you're allowed to inspect for. Another thing is uh, the use of the property and the restrictions that might uh, fall there, uh, building restrictions, easements, restricted covenants, uh, zoning ordinances and regulations. Uh, or there might be a mandatory homeowners association and dues. Uh, this is the time to investigate those and make sure that they're okay with you. And then lastly is square footage verification. So if you're getting a loan on the property, you'll be getting a, uh, an appraisal and the appraiser, appraiser will measure the house, but uh, that'll be done after our investigations period. If, uh, if there's a concern over the amount of square footage, that uh, that you want to look at then we need to have somebody come over and measure it um, at, during this time and, and see if it works for you otherwise I mean most people aren't buying a house unless you're an investor maybe um, a, on a dollar per square foot basis you're you're looking at it and buying it because it meets your needs and it fits your furniture you think and it will meet the needs of your family whatever that looks like um, but square footage is, uh, is something that can be verified during this time. And if that's important to you, then we need to uh, have it measured. So most transactions really just have a whole house home inspection and a termite inspection. Uh, if something calls for something more specific, or we need to have a specialist uh, come look at some different area of the roof or foundation or something, we can do that. But we'll get a report back from the, the home inspector and we need to separate from that the nice to haves from the, the major items, the ones that if they weren't taken care of or couldn't be uh, cured, then the house just isn't uh, worth it to you for what you're offering to pay. And then we take from that list things that we might ask the seller to uh, participate in the re repairs or replacements of. And that's where the term TRR comes in. And Oklahoma has a form called the Notice of Treatments, Repairs and Replacements form. And that's an item or that's a form that uh, will put items down of, of things that we want to have the seller take care of in order to uh, make the house worth what you're paying for it. Something to keep in mind that this is uh, this isn't the time to uh, pick apart the, the cosmetic and minor things that might just be normal wear and tear. This is this is looking for things that uh, if if they weren't corrected, that the house just wouldn't be worth it to you. Those are those are major to you and we need to address them. If you're buying a new home, some of these things obviously will uh, not be an issue, but uh, we definitely want to look into all those things. It's a little bit of a different process and a punch list, and I'll certainly help you navigate that on a case by case basis. So we prepare that TRR form or that notice of treatments, repairs and replacements and we present it to the listing agent who uh, shares it with the seller. They look it over. We have generally uh, by default, we have seven days to negotiate that with the seller. Now that time period could be uh, agreed upon differently between you and the seller, but generally about a week we have to negotiate those things back and forth. Um, if the seller is unable or unwilling to uh, make those repairs or we can't come to an agreement on all of those things and the negotiations break down, then, then we uh, we've can cancel the contract and your earnest money would be returned. But in most cases, we successfully negotiate this, uh, this period of the contract and we're on to the next phase for uh, getting title work completed and the appraisal and the, and the loan process finished and on to closing and having you home. Did I leave you with any follow-up questions or maybe not answer a question that you have? Listen, if you want to know anything more about the buying or selling process or want me to take a deeper dive in any of the things I've talked about today, just send me a message or email, a text message, whatever, and I will respond as quickly as I can. I'll see you in another video. All right, all right. All right, all right.